Welcome to Thursday. It's the second day of June 2022. This day weather podcast brought to you by Cowboy State Daily. Cowboy State Daily has more original Wyoming news content than any other news organization in the state. Cowboy State Daily. Sign up for their daily newsletter and check them out on Facebook. As we take a look at what happened over the weekend, we all know that the mountains of the region got not a little snow, but a lot. Got some great photos in from Matt Edwards up in the northern Bighorn Mountains of Wyoming. This just looks like a snowmobile trip in the middle of winter, doesn't it? But that's what it looks like, over 20 inches of snow up there. So yeah, here we are on June 2nd, and while this picture was not taken today, it was taken very recently. So up in the high mountains of the region, it is looking a little winter-like, but it's going to be nice today. Boy, will it be really nice. Temperatures are starting to warm up. But what's nice about this is it's not getting too warm too fast which is good, especially with recent precipitation. You don't want to lose too much to evaporation. So this slow warming trend is great. We're also going to get into some afternoon and evening thunderstorm activity, especially along and east of the divide. Along and east of the Continental Divide, thunderstorm is going to be around just about every afternoon and evening, especially beginning tomorrow, continuing into early next week. West of the divide, the thunderstorm chances are there, but it's not very high, although I do see them increasing by early next week. Some long-range forecasts that have been recently issued may be in jeopardy of busting, and I'll show you why. Some really interesting things looking at the long-range forecast, and we may have to change the tune. Some long-range forecasts may have to change the tune if current trends continue and we'll show you why we're thinking of that and it'll be something that we'll watch as we go into the summer season. Today's 500 millibar chart shows a wavy pattern of lows across North America. Pretty impressive lows up here for this time of year across the northern tier, but it's a westerly mild Pacific flow moving on in. This is why it's getting warmer, but not too warm. The jet stream is you know, pretty far south really still for this time of year. So we're going to see temperatures that are going to be mild to moderate. As we look forward, we're basically going to be in that westerly flow with small weather disturbances traveling along and with the heat of the day setting off those showers and storms. There's a bit of a stronger trough and front that's going to come through the region Monday into Tuesday. That's the time frame we need to watch out for severe weather in the northern plains, the northern and central Rockies, and perhaps even down into the central and southern Rockies and southern plains. So this is a pretty typical early June weather pattern as it's starting to shape up. Now we're going to show you more and more of these maps in the coming weeks ahead as we just are now getting into our severe weather season. Severe weather in the western high plains and Rockies really hasn't gotten going yet and one reason for that is the coolness. The very cool weather compared to average in many areas has kept the severe weather threat down a little bit. This is for tomorrow where you see the lighter shade of green garden variety thunderstorms. The darker shade of green you're going to have a good chance of thunderstorms and some may be strong and then this yellow here highlights a severe weather risk that's a bit more elevated in northeastern Mexico and parts of West Texas. Of course boy they really need the rain down here so that is good news there but you can see how close to the continental divide that dividing line is. This is for tomorrow and this is for Saturday and a very similar map will be shown for Sunday. Then I think an elevated severe threat comes back in Monday and Tuesday of next week in some areas. Rainfall precipitation amounts, pretty nice rains again across the Pacific Northwest, the Northern Rockies, and you can see the wedge of drier conditions right here along and west of the divide where the air is drier. We've got to wait for that summer that Mon North American monsoon pattern to get going. That's going to be a little bit, but we do see it coming. But you can see along and east of the divide here, you're going to get a pretty active pattern of afternoon showers and thunderstorms, some occasionally severe. Nice to see this rain right here, as well as across parts of Nebraska and eastern Colorado. Now, I want to show you where we were a year ago. This is the temperature anomaly for the whole month of June in 2021. And a lot of you probably remember how warm June was in the West last summer. So here it is. And you can see how extensive the warmth was across the nation during the month of June last year. Very, very warm. It was really warm. And that was one problem that really exacerbated the drought was a hot June in the West with the Southeast a little bit cooler. Now we're in a, still, we're in a La Nina 
but you don't exactly have the same thing every time in every La Nina and in every situation. And what seems to be evolving is it does not look like it's going to be like this at all for this June of 2020, 2022 rather. Yeah, we're going to have some warm days in June. Certainly could have some hot days, but it doesn't look like anything of last year. This is what the temperature anomaly was like for yesterday, the first day of June. So for some of you who thought it was a little on the cool side, well, you were right. But you can see the contrast where it's really warm here and really cold here. But things will even out a little bit as some of this cool area is going to head to the east. So June off to a cool start. Now, I want to show you the latest Japanese model that comes out every Thursday. It tries to forecast four weeks in advance. It does pretty good, not great all the time. It's like any weather model. It's got its good days and it's got its bad days. But there's some tendencies showing up that are very interesting and kind of counter to some of the long range forecasts that have been issued for the summer season. Anywhere you see blue here, the upper level parts of the atmosphere are represented to be cooler than normal. So see blue, you think of cool. Yellow means warmer. And what we have here over a large part of the United States and parts of Southern Canada stretching back out into the Pacific is a rather broad and cooler than average temperature pattern aloft. And if you're cooler aloft, you're gonna be cooler on the ground. It does look like Central and Southern California and the desert Southwest will be hot. But the rest of the nation may not be as hot through the month of June. And that's why we don't think we're going to have this again. And if you look at some of the other things, when you look out to the next 28 days, see the light shade of blue here. Light shade of blue means above average amounts of precipitation. And there aren't any yellow areas in the United States. The yellow would mean drier than normal conditions. We don't see that anywhere in the lower 48. Also notice this. This is the same graphic I showed you, but for a global perspective. So here's that strip of below average heights at, in the upper levels at 500 millibars. Notice this other level of coolness on the equator here. Now this is really important, obviously, because if that's the case, this could interrupt some of the tropical forecasts as well. We'll see. Sea surface temperatures kind of dictate things more a little bit, but you know, this is something that we need to watch as well. But I will tell you this, if, if the tropics are a little bit cooler than average, that has a, a real big impact on the overall global picture of things. And these are the temperature forecasts, and I'm gonna zoom in here a little bit closer, but there's more blue than there is yellow globally in the month of June, according to the Japanese model. And if we zoom in here a little bit closer, you can see a lot of the US except California and the desert states is cool. Seasonal temperatures, average temperatures in the southeastern United States with the warmest weather relative to average out here in the Pacific, out here off the coast. But the rest of the globe, the exception is this area right here, uh, is not really warm for the month of June, at least relative to the 30 year average. This is why some long range forecasts may bust. The National Weather Service put out this forecast here May 19th, and basically what it's showing is a hot, hot summer pretty much across the entire United States. Where I do think this forecast will verify is probably right here in terms of heat. But I do think from what we're seeing, the rest of the United States, the forecast may bust completely, especially in this area right here based on what we're seeing, because it's not only the Japanese model, but the climate forecast system, and we'll show you that tomorrow, is suggesting the same thing. So the book isn't written yet for the way the summer of 2022 will go. It could be interesting, a lot of moving parts, and we'll keep track of it for you. One reason may be, let's look up in the Arctic. This is the mean temperature above 80 degrees north latitude. The red line means observed, the green line, means the average temperature from 1958 to 2002 in terms of just looking at what the normals will be. Now, temperatures here are in Kelvin, if you're wondering. But one thing that's going on is at the higher latitudes, so far we've been trending cooler than average up at the higher latitudes as well. So a lot going on could prove to be interesting as the summer unfolds. See you tomorrow.